we are not going to go to the route of trying to become competitive through devaluation. 83% of our economy is in the service sector. 9% of our economy is in the manufacturing sector. And, and we have no reason to, 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 de to, to stay competitive, to be competitive through devaluation. What we will do is that we are conscious of the cost of doing business in Hong Kong is high, and we are approaching it uh, differently. But not in the long-term interest of China as a whole. Certainly, Hong Kong... In the process of having to defend the dollar, interest rate may have to go up. We recognize this. There is not a single suggestion that autonomy has been violated. It has been a total disappointment. In terms of democratic process, the progress we will achieve in the next 10 years. And I think you will agree with me when I tell you that human rights is very much being protected in Hong Kong, alive and well. And that is the most important part. Now, insofar as reporting and so on and so forth, we still have to sort it out. But the more important thing is to make sure that what is promised in the basic law uh, is being totally and completely observed. And that is what is happening in Hong Kong. Of only 18 percent um, is something we treasure and value very much. <coughs> Hong Kong cannot and should not do things which are not in the long-term interest of China as a whole. Certainly, Hong Kong should not be permitted to be used as a base to destabilize China. Fortunately, the long-term interests of Hong Kong and China are the same. Indeed, if Hong Kong continues to prosper, we can contribute to the continued modernization of China. If China becomes more open and prosperous, Hong Kong will benefit even more.